welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's subject, Substrate Integrated Waveguides, Limits and Capabilities. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about SIW, and that is Substrate Integrated Waveguide, and talk to you about some of the features and benefits and some of the limits as well. Now, SIW is actually a structure that's been around a very long time. It's how you can actually build a rectangular waveguide into a printed circuit board. And we'll get into a little bit more details as we go along here. But SIW has uh, several different benefits. And with the push with millimeter wave lately, there's been more and more applications wanting to employ SIW. And in some cases, that makes sense. In other cases, maybe not. But there are some benefits to SIW. Uh, one is you can have, assuming it's designed correctly, and built correctly. You can have no uh, radiation losses. You can have very good dispersion, so you could have wide band applications, uh, excellent isolation. Uh, also, spurious modes can be minimized or actually eliminated, so there's a lot of good benefits to SIW. Additionally, at millimeter wave frequencies, SIWs can have lower losses than other type of structures like microstrip or ground to coplanar waveguide, depending on the design, of course. So let's go ahead and show a little bit of detail about SIW. The picture shown here on the left is a traditional rectangular waveguide, basically a metal tube that will allow electromagnetic wave to propagate through that tube. And then on the right is two different uh, views of a printed circuit board made into a SIW, a substrate integrated waveguide, which is basically a rectangular waveguide. So the top and bottom of the waveguide is actually the copper planes. So this is a two copper layer circuit. And then the sidewalls of the SIW, or the sidewalls of the rectangular waveguide for a printed circuit board, are the plated through hole vias. And these vias, when they're stitched together very closely, they will act like a solid wall at a certain frequency to where the wavelength is uh, long enough that it will not be affected by these differences from one plated through hole to another. So an SIW is normally implemented in a printed circuit board along with other components, or in other words, it's not just a SIW printed circuit board. So there's usually different uh, millimeter wave or microwave components as part of the printed circuit board, and then there's a portion of the board that is the SIW. Now there's, as I mentioned, already several benefits to SIW, but there's also some major challenges, especially at millimeter wave. And some of the challenges would be radiation and radiation between the plated through holes, the gap that's between these plated through holes. You can get some radiation losses there. There. Also, the transition from whatever structure it is, microstrip or granite coplanar, into the SIW can also be difficult to design and characterize. And then finally, the uh, plated through hole location for the sidewalls. And that actually varies from, uh, from one fabricator to another, and even within a circuit, you get a slight amount of variation. And what I mean by that is the plated through holes that are acting as the sidewalls, when they're drilled, you would think that they're in line and stitched together, which is true, but there is actually some side-to-side -side variation, and it's very, very minimal. But at millimeter wave frequencies, where the wavelength is very small, uh, some of these structures can detect that difference, and that can be a problem as well. So to begin with, let's take a look at the transition, the signal transition into an SIW. What I'm showing here in this picture is three different drawings of uh, the same SIW structure in the body. It's just the transition to the SIW is what's different. And the top structure is a microstrip to SIW transition to coming in from the left and the right are the feed lines, which are microstrip, and they are a more narrow conductor to maintain 50 ohms until it gets closer to the SIW structure. And then you can see it fan out. It has a fan out. And that fan out is not a trivial thing to determine. And as a matter of fact, I don't have time to talk about that in much detail. So I would ask you to go to IEEE's website and type in microstrip to SIW transition. And there you can find several papers on how to do this. So in general, this uh, microstrip to SIW transition is actually pretty good for wideband applications. However, uh, my experience is the 3 dB cutoff, which is basically the cutoff uh, from not a waveguide mode to a waveguide mode. Uh, typically, there's a little bit of noise involved with this transition. The transition shown in the middle below here, that's also microstrip to SIW, but in this case, I'm using stub tuning or impedance matching. And now the transition uh, for the 3 dB cutoff is actually very smooth and very precise, as a matter of fact. The drawback here, though, is now you have a more narrow range of frequencies to work within when you're in the waveguide mode itself. And then finally, the bottom structure is a ground to coplanar transition to SIW. 
In my opinion, that's probably the best one to use at millimeter wave frequencies. It's a little more difficult to characterize in the design phase, and there are a few concerns in the fabrication aspects, but uh, again, this probably has the best performance at the high frequency, uh, millimeter wave frequencies. Shown here is a screenshot of the microstrip to SIW transition. It's basically a circuit with connectors on both ends, and it's showing the 3 dB cutoff as marker number two. And you can see in that range there's a little bit of noise, so that 3 dB cutoff point in frequency is not real crisp, it's not well defined. Now if you go to the right a little bit more, you see marker number one, and that's in the region where this is behaving as a true rectangular waveguide, or an SIW. And at that point, the return loss is very good, group delay looks good, everything looks fine. And you can see, you, go in, you can go out in frequency, a pretty good uh, range there, and you have a pretty wide band response, which is good. Another concern is the other microstrip to SIW transition, which is shown here. And here's a screenshot for this type of transition that I'm actually using stub tuning. And the stub tuning is very good to get a nice clean uh, response for the 3 dB cutoff, which is marker 2. And you can see that's in a region where the S21, the blue curve, is very well defined. And then if you go to the right of that, the marker number 1, that's actually in the region where the SIW is behaving as a, a very good rectangular waveguide. But if you go to the right of that just a little bit, you start seeing some problems with the behavior of the SIW, and that's really showing that this type of structure is good for getting a very good 3 dB cutoff, as marker 2 is at. But at marker 1, you do have good wave, uh, you do have good waveguide responses, but after that, it uh, goes bad pretty quick. So essentially, you have a small range of frequencies that this is going to operate in very well. Uh, another concern for SIW at millimeter wave is the potential for radiation leakage losses, and that's due to the plated through holes and the gaps between the plated through holes. And these plated through holes are used as the sidewalls of the structure, but you cannot get these ideally right next to each other. You have to have some gap between them. That's just the nature of how do you build a printed circuit board. And that gap is actually frequency dependent, and more specifically, it's wavelength dependent. Now, there is a general rule of thumb, and that is the gap between the through hole walls from one edge to the other edge of a plated through hole wall should be one eighth wavelength or less for the highest operating frequency that the SIW will be used with. The drawing shown here is the top view of the microstrip to SIW transition. And I wanted to give you an example of about the best case scenario for millimeter wave frequencies for the uh, plated through hole pitch to get good performance with this, these uh, plated through holes as the sidewalls of the SIW. So what I'm showing here is the plated through holes are drilled at 8 mil diameter. The pitch is 18 mils, so that means the material between the drilled holes is 10 mils. And that's about as close as you can drill the holes and still have good fabrication, good reliability of the circuit. So I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Uh, there are exceptions. You can do some special processes to maybe get this even more close or have the plated through holes even closer in this. But for typical standard printed circuit board fabrication, this is about as tight as pitch as you can get on this type of a circuit. Now what that allows you is, um, assuming the eighth wavelength rule of thumb, that allows the structure to operate pretty cleanly out to 80 gigahertz. Assuming you have a good transition from the microstrip to the SIW, the plated through holes will act as a good wall for the SIW out to about 80 gigahertz. That now concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.